What's good, Tamers? This is Akaro from Lockout Games, bringing you a match between a red and yellow Agubon and then a purple base Cherubimon with yellow for support. Let's get started. The Cherubimon player starts off by hatching an Upamon in the back, and with the yellow Digitama, they're able to support things like Bushi Agumon. But it looks like they're missing a rookie, so they're going to play the Analog Youth for two, setting the Agumon player to two, and looking at the top three, pulling any Digimon that they need out of that. And it looks like they're going to grab a Pokemon. Passing the turnover, the Agumon player is going to go into a Kaporimon in the back row and then go straight into a TK, looking at their security, and it looks like they're going to pull out a TK and a Kari for this. So it seems like both decks have a pretty extensive amount of tamers, especially the Chubimon player, and they want to set those up in the back row so that they can get uh, their combos off. And we do see the Pokemon being played on the Chubimon player side, so this is going to let them look at the top five cards of their deck. They're going to be able to pull a 10 Warriors or a Hybrid out as well as a Tamer, and we do see them selecting the Rihimon, uh, setting up that little loop that they have, especially with Chubimon. And then the Agumon player is just going to play the TK, so we see a lot of setting up coming from both of the decks, just passing the turn back and forth, and really using the memory that they're being given by both opponents. So we do see a Koichi coming down for the Cherubimon player that's going to let them draw a card and pitch a card. And the Agumon player sends a turn right back with a double Tai Kamiya play, setting up that back row and preparing for what looks like an Agumon to go Digivolve on top of the Kapurimon. So we see the Loimon getting Digivolved on top of Koichi, followed by a Rihimon, and this little mini loop is really good as they're able to apply pressure and still not lose the total amount of tamers that they have. And they're going to stop their turn by playing a Kari, passing it back over to the Agubon player, who then just plays a TK. Looking back into their security, we'll see what card they decide to pull from that. And it looks like they pull a Pokemon. So finally we do see the Bushi Agumon being digivolved on top of the Upamon for the Chirubimon player. Um, that's going to set up later turns if they can swing with that and get it deleted. And then we do see another Koichi coming down onto the field allowing them to draw one and pitch one. Agumon finally makes its appearance over in the back row for the Agumon player, so this is going to set up future turns. Uh, once they promote this, they're going to be able to draw two and gain two memory. And then we get a Pokemon play from the Agumon player as well, so this is actually going to whiff and they're not going to hit anything, so that's pretty unfortunate. But it does allow them to Digivolve on top of their Tamers, and we do see the TK being Digivolved into a Kazumon. They're going to gain that memory and then go straight into a Jet Sylphimon, recovering some security there, being set back up to five at the beginning of the game, and now starting to launch some pressure onto the Trubimon player as they do have two Digimon on the battle area and one in the back row. So the Trubimon player is going to swing in with Bushi Agumon that's going to get destroyed, hitting a Dynasmon in the security. So setting the Agumon player back down to four and then we do see the playing of the Trubimon. So they're going to be able to pop a level four or lower so we're going to see them get rid of the Pokemon and then they're also able to play a Tamer from their trash and we do get Mimi coming back into the back row. Both sides having a lot of tamer and having a lot of combo potential at this point, being able to go off with their strategies. Agumon gets promoted, letting them draw two and gain two memory, and then they digivolve straight into the Bond of Bravery, so they are going to sacrifice two of their security, but this is going to let them go straight into the level seven, which is very powerful and have a big effect on this board. It's looking like it's going to be a big turn for Agubon, and then they're going to play a delicate plan. So this is going to shut off all the option cards that's going to be in the security of the Trubimon player, and they're going to get to pop something on attacking, so they get rid of the Pokemon. The first check of the security goes straight to the trash, and then the following two actual checks are going to be what looks like a Pokemon, and then an option that's not going to set off. So this is looking like a huge turn for the Agubon player. They're going to swing with the Jet Sophimon. It is going to live hitting a Koichi, so they are going to get to draw one card and pitch one card on the Trubimon player side. So now they're down to one security. This is pretty scary because the uh, Agubon player still has three memory and they are going to Digivolve into a Kazumon. So that's going to give them another attacker and they only have one check left. And they're going to Digivolve into a Jet Sylphimon, giving themselves three security, swinging in, and it is going to get destroyed as it does hit the Rihimon and both are going to clash for 7,000. But now the Agubon player is in a pretty tight spot as the Bond of Bravery is going to go away at the end of the turn and they do have a vulnerable Jet Sophiemon on the board with only three security. The Cherubimon player is at zero security, but this is where this deck really does shine. After swinging in, if the Cherubimon is destroyed, it is going to get a ton of value as there are five Tamers on the Cherubimon player's side, and it's going to be able to bring back five separate Digimon, and we know one of them is going to have Rush as it is going to be a Bushi Agumon. So a little bit of thinking for the Trubimon player as setting this up could be the final turn for them. So they're going to swing in with the Trubimon and it's going to hit a TK and a Kari. 
From here, they're going to go into a calling from the darkness. This is going to delete the Cherubimon and set off a whole bunch of triggers. So the first one is going to be the on deletion effect from the Cherubimon, bringing back five level three Digimon from the trash. We do see two Bokemon, a Bushi Agumon, a Lusamon, and a Salamon. And then with a level five or higher being deleted with Digivolution sources, they're going to be able to suspend the analog youth, which is going to let them hatch into the Upamon and also gain one memory. And now we have the triggers from the Pokemons hitting the field, which is going to let them look at the top five and pull a Tamer and a Hybrid or a Ten Warriors. So you can see a lot of stuff happened just from deleting this one Cherubimon, and they still have four memory for the turn, and they're going to be able to go off at this point, Digivolving on top of all of their Tamers and gaining a ridiculous amount of memory. And then we see the final trigger happening from the playing of the Lusamon, bringing them back up to one security. So one Digimon getting deleted set off a whole chain reaction of events. We see the Bushi Agumon swinging in and hitting a 2000 Agumon, so it's actually going to live. And now with the sheer amount of memory that they're able to get from Digivolving on top of one of their Tamers, they're going to change one of the Koichi into a Loimon that's going to swing in, hitting an Agumon, but it doesn't really matter at this point because a Kajalier Mon is going to come in and swing for a game. So Cherubimon takes the first one, let's get into the second game. Starting off game number two, we have the Agumon player going first. They're going to hatch into a Kaporimon and then go into the Agumon, getting that out pretty early and letting that sit in the back row. Let's see what they play for support, and we do see a TK hitting the field, so this is going to put the Cherubimon player to four, but this is going to keep the Agumon player from being memory locked for the rest of the game, and they're able to look at their security. So they do take a little bit of time, and it seems like there might not have been some great choices, so they pick a Dynasmon. From there, the Troopmon player is going to go into a Salamon on top of the Upamon in the back row, and then play their own memory resetter. So this is going to be a mat, not being able to bring back a Digimon or an option, but it is also going to set them to three memory for the rest of the game. And then we see another mat hitting the field. They're not going to get the most out of Tamer effects, but they are going to have Tamers on the board. And speaking of which, the Agumon player is going to throw down a tie. So the Salamon gets promoted on the Cherubimon player side, and they're going to swing in for one, and then going to play the Pokemon after this, looking at the top five and deciding what they want. So both sides right now look like they might be bricking as the tie into passing of the turn on the Agumon player side tells me that they might not have anything in hand right now that they need, and they didn't promote the Agumon as they want that as an option for the Agumon later. But we do see the mat going into a Loimon, and the Pokemon's just going to extend that turn. Once again, a really great card for any hybrid deck, and really just does so much for the amount of memory that you pay to get it onto the field. I would say at this point, the Trubemon players add a little bit of an advantage as they do have a Pokemon on the field, which is going to help extend later turns, and it helped extend this one to the point where they're able to play a Kari, which is going to tax the Agubon player if they attack into the security. But then we see an Atomic Blaster hit the field, so that's actually going to wipe out the Loimon and the Pokemon. And that card in this format is just really powerful, being able to delete up to 8,000 DP worth of Digimon. So the Trubemon player is going to go into the Ubamon in the back row. At this point, they're kind of resetting from scratch, they do have some Tamers on the field, but without a Pokemon to get the most out of that, it is going to take them a little bit to gain that momentum back. So we do go into the Loimon on top of the mat, and that's going to draw into the Bushi Agumon that's going to Digivolve on top of the Upamon. And then lastly, the Loimon is going to go into the Rihimon, setting up, once again, that nice combo of being able to replay Tamers and pretty much gets you a free attack without having to worry about the Rihimon being deleted. And then we see a huge just slap down a Dynasmon, sending the Cherubimon player to 10. Um, this is going to keep them safe for a little bit due to its ability to bring back the top of your deck as a security once you're at three or lower once per turn. So this might not be the worst play, and it does seem like they have bricked out pretty hard of the Agubon player side if they're hard playing a Mega and not able to do too much more with the Agumon. Rihimon swings in, not worrying about deleted, and of course, for this one swing, it has jamming because it hits a tie, which is really going to help out the Agumon player when he promotes that Agumon. And then a Bushi Agumon swings in, hitting the Bond of Bravery, and due to the Dynasmon's ability, it's actually going to recover one security, so keeping him at three. And then we see the named card, Shurumon, being Digivolved on top of the Rihimon. This is going to let them pop a level four, but there isn't any on the Agubon player side, so they're just going to get to play a Tamer from the trash, and they go with a Matishita. This is going to let them bring back something, an option, or a purple Digimon from their trash, and we do get a Pokemon being played. 
So at this point, I would say the True Room on board has pretty much stabilized back again. They're in a very good spot as they have three Tamers on the board, a Pokemon, and a True Room on that's not afraid of being destroyed as a Bushi Agumon is in the trash, as well as some other Digimon. And speaking of destroying the True Room on, we have a Death Claw hitting the field. So Trumon is going to get destroyed once again, setting off some triggers. First thing is going to be the Analog Youth that's going to hatch the Upamon and give the Trumon player one more memory. And then we have three Digimon hitting the field. One of them is going to be a Bushi Agumon, a Pokemon, and then a Salamon. And the Pokemon trigger is going to let them look at the top five and pretty much pull whatever they need to continue extending their turn. At this point, there's another Pokemon on the field that is able to be used to gain memory, and we do see that happening with the Kaiser Leomon digivolving on top of the Kari, gaining them two, and then swinging in with the Bushi Agumon, hitting a Zoe. So they're going to be able to look through their security and pull a hybrid. They do see the Jet Sylphimon, so they are going to be able to recover a mode from that. But at this point, the Trubemon player is at such an advantage, so they swing in with a Kaiser Leomon and it does hit a Bond of Bravery, and that is what looks like the third one that was in security, so now we know where all of those were at and why the Agumon hasn't been pushed up. And from here, the Trubemon player is just extending the turn, going into another Kaiser Leomon and then a Rihimon on top of that. And from here, you can just see how powerful Pokemon with that many Tamers in this deck really is. It's able to continue its turn and extend and just do a lot of swings back to back and put the opponent on the defensive. With the Rihimon being deleted, we do see the Matt being played in the back row. Digivolving into the Bushi Agumon on top of the Upamon in the back row. And then Koichi being played to draw a card and pitch a card. So all in all, a huge turn for the Trubimon player. And at this point, the Agumon player is really, really far behind. And they're going to have to do something pretty desperate and amazing to not lose this next turn. So they promote the Agumon. And I think there they got the memory, but they only drew one card. And then they go into a Jet Sylphimon, which we knew that they had in their hand, on top of the Zoe. Not going to be able to recover because a hybrid was not underneath it beforehand. At this point, I think the writing is on the wall for the Agumon player. They are going to be able to get rid of a decent amount of Digimon if they really want to, but they're not going to be able to stop that Bushi Agumon or any of the Tamers coming up from the back row. So we do see the Atomic Blaster getting rid of pretty much the whole board. At this point, we see the Promote, and Bushi swings for the win, giving the game to Chirumon 0-2. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And feel free to leave a comment below with what card you're looking forward to most in BT8 or leave some feedback on how you feel about the new editing for the videos. I look forward to seeing you all next time. So until then, let's get that gate closed.